today's workshop is going to be the epitome of what improv is all about. So uh, when we think of improv, that was kind of like my opener. So I want to wait for the fifth person, but I'll give you a little, you know, um, a little sneak peek. Uh, <laughs> and I realized that as I was saying, I was like, wait no. A second, wait a second, Mama Lynn. Does this mean you're not improvising right now? <laughs> Aren't you supposed to improvise an improvisation workshop? <laughs> the improvisation. I'm out. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm joking. <laughs> hey, the facilitation component always has to be on point, but the improv will That's be right. free. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. um, but isn't that the truth? I mean, good improvisation is built on a good foundation, right? <laughs> well, wait. Say that again, Nima. I didn't catch all of it. I said. Good improvisation is based on good foundation. It is based on good foundation. When you say the word foundation, though, what do you mean? Uh, a lot of practice, I guess. In my case, with the things that I that I um, that I improvise on, uh, th maybe a lot of play. Um, when I'm improvising, it's rarely the first time that I've ever tried that. It's just not with the spin I'm doing this time. I'm, I'm not That's allowing the world into my pre, pre you know, am, I, am I making any sense? You are. The thing is though, that even the way that you said it, there's still improvisation happening there because it's new for the second time. So you never know what's gonna come, right? And it had to happen a first time. But the thing right. about it is that, um, there really is no practice to it. Like, you know, when we start, like, there's routine to it. So, like, when we walk out of our homes, right, I have to walk down two flights of steps. Steps. That is my routine. My body, my muscle memory is aware of that, right? But what's going to be on those steps, who's going to be on those steps, <laughs> is nothing that is of my knowing, right? And so those are the things that we improvise. How are we going to walk in our day? How are we going to purposefully be in each moment? And that's really uh, the, the way that I, I'm going to kind of like put the umbrella on, on improvisation today. How do we, for me, imp improv is about improving our connection to moment. Mm -hmm. So how do we show up to the moment and how do we show up to the moment how do we find out what are the things that don't allow us to show up in the moment you know what are the things that we'll discuss a little bit well you know some of the things that we'll discuss are like blocks it's a simple thing that we do in theater and it's a simple thing that we can do in improv to shut something down right what are the blocks that we do in improv what are the blocks that we do in our creative process in our life process you know in our daily process and um, can I can I say what, something too? Like, you, yes. like I wanna I wanna interject just for a second. Like the reason why I think improv is so important too is like not just for like how to retrain your brain as you go through challenges in life, but also like for poets especially or any type of performer. Like if you show up to a venue and you've never been to that venue before and the whole energy is crazy or it's not what you expected or you get thrown off because you missed a line in your poem like if you practice improv you will never like choke you'll never um you know the, the audience won't even know the audience won't even know that you messed up you know only you know that you messed up but if you're able to improv then like you can keep it together you can keep the momentum going you know there you go yeah yep some of my biggest fuck ups on stage is when I just knew that there was a line that was really funny and I'm ready in my ego. Like, yeah, this one is going to rock the house. And all of a sudden it's like crickets. So oh. What the hell happened? No one laughed, right? Because oh. it's, it's a completely different audience. It's like, damn, I was just, you know, blown away by myself, <laughs> by myself. <laughs> Do we have our... <laughs> Do we have the fifth person yet, or should we just be here? We do. We have the fifth person. Yay. I can't see her. Hello, Lou. Let's see. Hi, everyone. Hello. Can you all not see my camera? I can't I see can. your camera, but I can hear your beautiful voice. 
I just Ms. like Anna? choosing not to work. Can you see me now? I can see you. Um, can everyone see each other? We can't see Meg. You can see me now? I yeah. can see you. Yeah. Blue, you. We can see you. Yep. So everyone can see each other? The screen is split so that everyone can see each other? No, you're oh, right. I can see everybody now. Okay. And the person who's which not sharing the screen is this. So sorry. The person who's not sharing their vid, there we go, is that a spectator. They didn't want to be a player, or she didn't want to be a player. My pronouns are they, them. It, Hi. Hi. I'm, uh, I'm uh, marshalling a, a child warfare fight for a minute, but I would love to watch if that's okay with everyone. That's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. So you can be like our audience. Yep. Beautiful. Hi, Meg. <laughs> I was looking down. I didn't think that you were there. Okay, beautiful. Okay. Um. So, but it, no one can. I'm the only person that can see everyone. Us. My no, shade. Can everybody can see each other. So, like, are we like everyone. the DC bunch right now? Like the Brady bunch? Can we like look down and see each other? Yeah, it's are like you? that. <laughs> All right. So. I'll, I'll ask you this question now. So what is improv to you guys? To you all? Mm. Anyone, anyone? Quickly. First thing that pops into your head. Choices. For me, it's choices. Choices? Okay. Jamal, what is it for you? Um, scary. <laughs> yes very much so um can anyone you know show sure hands how many people can relate to that absolutely you know um yes um anything else one more i, I feel like if you're not scared when you're improvising I, I i don't i'm not doing it right if i'm not scared and i'm improvising that's part of right. why it's so exciting that's what draws me to it <laughs> what you said first thing in my head fun i but it, i didn't feel like that was useful <laughs> But it, it's fun because it's scary, I think. Mm -hmm. That's moment. interesting. Uh, because the word scary for me resonates with fear. And so for me, fear is one of those things that, yeah, like we accept and, but we never want it to kind of control the moment. So a lot of times um, uh, I like to change it to, instead of it being scary, for it to be like a, a suspense, the unknowing, because mm, when yeah. we look at what the definition of improvisation is, that's what it is. It's yeah. creating without knowing, you know, without mm. preparation, right? Mm. Yeah. So why do we improvise? Like what kinds of improvisation is there? Uh, at the, Shane said, we do poetry. When you think of improvisation, what are some other forms of ways that people improvise, Music. like art forms or hip hop has first. a lot of improvisation in it. What'd you say? Yeah, hip hop has a lot of improvisation in it. So does jazz. Yeah. Hip hop, right. jazz, ciphers. Right? Yeah, the hip hop, first thing jazz. Yeah. Not so much classical. <laughs> Not so much classical, but and hip hop really and jazz. And if we really ponder on that, Neil, you, you probably come up with so many different examples of it because improv, like we started our conversation, is life, right? We yeah. <laughs> come in, we yeah. do things from when we're a kid, when we're a baby, we take our first steps. That's complete improvisation, you know? And we do yeah. it yeah. a little bit like, okay, what's going to happen here? But I'm going to feel it out. And if I fall, well, you know what? <laughs> I My like that because... Yeah, because you're, what you're pointing out is that you don't have to be a performer to be an improviser. Everybody is. Exactly. You've already got a skill set to base on if you want to do it as a performer. I, and that's good. That's cool. I like that. It's really play. Like when you are doing an improv class or doing improv on stage, it's it's a form of play, it's a form of play. in a way. I lost Lynette. I lost everyone. Play. Uh, play you know what i'm going to connect to my ethernet because i think I, my wi-fi is messing with me okay lou yeah let's give her a second i think no um uh, she can be as long as we would want it to
I have your stuff pulled up right here. Thank you. Okay. You can touch me. Uh, this is my. Okay, cool. Circle um, of you. That is for my. Hopefully, you all will have a more steady view of me now. This blue thing is for my work. For my. It, when I sit in the right position at, when I'm working and I have my headset on, yeah. it gives the illusion that I'm in a call center <laughs> to who call in. And they think, supposedly, that I'm not at home, even though now everyone's working at home. So it's Got dumb. It. But it's attached to my chair and I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all can uh, uh, kind of relate to that a little bit now that we're all in quarantine. Um, <laughs> So what I was trying to say was that for me, uh, a lot of like tapping into improv in class and other situations has been play. And that's why I think they're called players. Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, a lot of times people get scared to do uh, improv because they think that they need to be funny. And I have a very dry sense of humor. Like I don't even like family guy. Uh, and <laughs> like, I, yeah, I, I, well, I don't care for it. But it's interesting, though, because when we think about comedy, the things that make us ball out laughing in comedy are the things that are the truths, the realities that we never really hear people speak, right? Mm. <laughs> and so it's like, mm. if we show up to that truth, right, then we're there. And all of a sudden, the moment has been revealed and the moment has been celebrated and then there you go. And that's what we're gonna do. So I want for you to think of these things as we go in. We're gonna play a game called Yes And, which is like the epitome of what improv is because we have to come from a place of yes, yes, yes. And so we th when we think about the yes part of the yes and, we want to let be. So if I call on you to be with someone else in a yes and, yes and improv, the let be part is the surrender. Just surrender yourself to this very moment, letting go of it. So right now, I'm going to put my, my face really, really close to you guys. Mm -hmm. right? A lot of times when people greet us, we immediately say, oh, yeah, I'm good. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Without any real connection <laughs> to what's going on, right? And that is the mask that we wear, right? So everyone kind of just like, like, look at yourself for a moment in this space, really just look at yourself and look at that mask that you wear <laughs> and consider your face kind of like clay right now, right? And it's already in a position, right? Whatever position you want it to be in. And you want to demold it. You want to make it flat. You want to make it something that's not formed so that then you can form it yourself. Come on, Jamal. Let me see your fingers on your face. Let me see you demold yourself. <laughs> Where so, we have permission to touch our face. To touch your face. <laughs> we have permission. Shake it up. 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 Because here it is, right? It's right in the eyes. It's right in the eyes, the moment of letting go, the moment of surrender. And that's what the let be is, right? The be is we surrender to the moment. Let go. <laughs> that surrender allows us to be free. We can be, now we can make whatever it is that we want to make out of ourselves, out of our body, out of the moment, out of whatever it is that comes our way. We are ready. I love how ready. much you're moving, Lynette, in this. Mm. Like, I haven't seen people move like this on a oh. Zoom call. So it's just so beautiful to me to see how much you're embodying your space, taking up your space. Mm. Thank you for yeah. that. Thank you. Nice feedback. Oh, thank you, Lou. Thank you so much, Mama. Um, so the let go is the freedom that we end up giving to ourselves, to our source. And when we let go, freedom, then we let see. We can accept and we can embrace the moment so that then we can prepare ourselves for our offer. Mm -hmm. Our offer is the end. Because you can have an offer. You can have a brick. But if you don't have another brick, 
-hmm. that someone is going to come with and you can't build anything and we're mm -hmm. here to build right because this is not just yeah. improv for <laughs> a silly game just to pass the time but this is really <laughs> about improving the improv of life improving the improv of community of building of support of love right okay so, yeah <laughs> so with that we come with our offer which is the and part the and is the forward movement so you need to come with your and now here's the thing those are the only things that you need for this game. That's it. The yes. So if I come and I say, Rumi, where are you? I need you as an example. Come. <laughs> this is how I rope in my fiance too, and he's just. You know. Did you hear my Puerto Rican? <laughs> come out. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my lovely partner, Rumaldo Castillo. Uh, <laughs> my <Vanna. laughs> So, okay, so I'm going to give them. A yes. And so I means I'm gonna give you an offer. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something to you, and then you're gonna come in to the space and you're gonna say yes and and add to that offer that I've given you. Okay. Ready? Okay. Can uh, someone say one, two, three, go? One, two, three, go. I, I don't know if we're gonna be able to make it on time for this. Oh man, I really thought we'd be done by now. This is when you come in with your yes and baby. She's <laughs> <laughs> making you work for it. I'm yeah, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm gonna get us some lemonade. I'm gonna get another shovel, and we're gonna make this up. Yes, and yes, yes and. Uh -huh. But I, I didn't see that. Yes, I got it. It's my first time too, just so you know. It's my first time, so I'm in. It's okay to make mistakes. That's how we learn. Yeah. Improvise. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Whew. And I'm gonna get the other shovel. We are gonna make it on time. Are you sure? Let me grab some lemonade. We got this. All right. All right. I'm counting on you. I can't do this alone. I need you. So that was kind of easy, except I had a little bit of a workout. Ooh, I had that body moving in ways it hasn't. <laughs> so <laughs> there's an easy way to make it not happen, though. What do you think that way is? Hey, Meg. <laughs> say no. What'd you say? I said to say no. You just say no. So there are kind of like a couple of ways that you can negate um, an improv or stop the process, right? Definitely, it is a no. Now in that no, there are some categories, right? So the first one is like a whole, a solid no, where the person comes in and if I was shoveling and I said, come on, I need your help. What are you talking about? I don't even know where you are. I'm gonna leave this joint. That's a hard no. You have completely denied the offer. A lot of times we do that in life. A lot of times when there's a moment that shows up, we may be completely clear about what's happening, but if we're not ready to accept it, if something is scaring us, if inadequacy is there, then we're just gonna, we're just gonna deny it and you know, make the person look like a fool. Here's the wonderful thing about improv. It is, has nothing to do with your ego. It has nothing to do with you. It's all about making the other person look good. <laughs> So he came in to save the day and took all of the pressure off of himself. So think about that too. When we start the game, think about that. It has nothing to do with how good you look. It has nothing to do with how smart you sound. It's all about what the person has offered and you're adding to it. There you go. Making that oh. person. That's all it is. Oh. Holding space for the offer that that person has given you. So with that said, that's the one block I'm going to give you. Who would like to be in pairs so that we can do this together? Shane and who else? I if I can't see the other people. I can't see Nemo. Nemo's there. Okay, who wants to be with Shane? I think Nemo just raises his hand. Nemo, did you raise your hand or no? Yeah, I'll be. I'll do it. I'll do it. We'll do it. Oh, is there? Yeah. Yep. I, can't, yeah. I can't see you guys together yeah. on my screen. I can't. Yeah. Okay, how we do that? You just Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
So who's going to be person A, which is the person who's going to give the offer and who is going to accept, surrender freedom and accept the offer? Who wants to be person A? Nemo, I'll let you be the alpha male. <laughs> a, oh, yeah. boy. Now, does that mean that he's the one that's going to be giving the offer first? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll, he's going to take the lead. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. That's interesting. All right, beautiful. Okay. Just any, so, anything, uh, anything at all. Anything at all. Any offer, absolutely. right? Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing about it. So here's going to be your cue. All of my players, we're going to give them the same count that you gave Rumi and I. One, two, three, go. Y ahí va a empezar. That's the way it's going to start. Are we ready? Okay. Here we go, JP. Oh, JP, JP, JP. JP, why did I say that? Jesus, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready? Here we go. We're going to do the countdown. One, two, three, go, go. You know, I, I, I'm wondering, Shane, if you thought I wasn't going to find out, if you thought that you could keep it from me, I, I, I have vision, at least I hope. How do you think that I could not know that this was going to happen? Yes, uh, I didn't think that you were going to find out because, you know, I, I, I thought I was going to be really smart about it. I thought I was going to hide my Twizzler addiction. But, you know, the Twizzler addiction has just gotten so out of control that I, I just can't hide it anymore. I'm eating them in the shower. There, there's wrappers all over the house. I'm so sorry I tried to hide this from you. <laughs> And the scene, Nemo. When I found them in my underwear drawer. When I found, I mean, how did they get in my underwear drawer? That's where the condoms are. My sanctum sanctorum. I thought maybe we could spice it up a little bit. Find an ending. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you, I reached for something I wanted in that drawer the other day, and I got a Twizzler. And it ended up in a very interesting place. So just. I'll I, get help. I told you, I, I'm okay with your having a, an affair with Twizzlers. Just keep me out of it. I don't, I don't want to have to, to look at it all the time. I don't, don't like judge the taste me. of the, the fake strawberry stuff. So it's okay that you do. I forgive you. I love you. But you gotta keep the Twizzlers away from me. Otherwise, I have no choice but to leave. Essie! I'll get help. I'll get help. I promise. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, that was fun. That All right, fun. really quickly before we get so before we go to the next one, some <laughs> feedback. How did it feel? Uh, well, I really, really do. I really do. I used to have a really bad Twizzler addiction for real, for real. <laughs> like, that's not even a joke. Like, that was, like, for real my life. You like, cannot I write life. Like, there's it's nothing true. better than true it's stories. Crazy. Seriously, like, I was, e I was literally eating them in the shower. And it was, like, the only thing that I could think of. I was like, what was I hiding from people? <laughs> and, like, and that is so you, too, because you really are, like, an open book, Shane, like you share so much of yourself that when I saw you like looking around, you were like literally looking for like something that from your life that you could have been <laughs> hiding because <laughs> you are so open <laughs> and so hilarious. It's so funny that like that's my dirty secret. It's <laughs> not that like I have... <laughs> Like, that's, that's the dirt yeah. that people are You're not Carol me. Baskin. You did not, oh, yeah. feed a did not feed a husband to a tiger. And there is an overeater <laughs> out there who's like, oh, my God, I can't believe that she disclosed that <laughs> to the world. I'm going to get so many emails now. I'm going to get so many emails from other people who are addicted to Twizzlers. I'm going to start a whole thing. <laughs> Thank you for being real. Thank you. Yeah. I was so afraid that, that I, I – I, when she said, who's going to be the A, I was like, there's no way. I, I don't know what to do. I, I don't make it me. Don't make it me. Don't make it me. But you said, make it me. And I'm like, okay, what? Like just, and, and I thought about the offer, right? Um, mm. And what I needed is you need to give her a cue, something to be, you know, something to be upset about. So I grabbed a hold of something and, and yeah. then, but I, and it was fun. It was fun. It was cool. I was having a good time doing that, but I was just, messing around 
and then she said Twizzler, and I and is ding. <laughs> yeah, I loved the underwear drawer part. Yeah. Oh. And here yeah. is the really Thank you, Shane. interesting. That and, was and that, and that. This is why I do improv because there's no way that that experience happens. <laughs> And let me tell you, um, uh, Nemo, thank you so much for taking on that role. Because if it wasn't such an obvious um, safe space, I would not have allowed for someone else to make that choice. Usually when someone says, let it be that person, I usually choose the person who said that. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> but, to, you know, it's like, but it, again, well, I'm well, always going to reflect it back. Why we, that's why I'm here to learn today at, <laughs> more about improv, you know, improvising because... I, I, I can see that I got more to learn. So thank no, you no, I was... a lot right there about taking the initiative. So thank you. Well, the thing too is that in, in taking the initiative, you um, it, I don't know if you did this, but I did it for you where I acknowledge, well, uh, she really knows that he can do it. She really mm -hmm. knows that he can, he, he, he can step up to the moment. Right. And so a lot of times we're put in precarious situations by other people simply because of things that they see in us that we might not see in ourselves. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it's not always that. Sometimes it's just they're projecting their own shit onto us, you know, but sure. you, know well, that, you have to really yeah. decide where to apply your own discernment in life and where to get your messages from the universe. Like, are you going to listen to those through other people? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. That's a big message that comes wow. from this for me. And to, 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 to play with someone who, who's playing. That, I mean, Shane, you, you were playing. So all I had to do was play along. So, yeah, yeah thank you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and here's the thing, too, Lujent, with what you said. If we, when we become more comfortable in delivering our yeses as opposed to confinement and inadequacy and staying in the no's, then we become clear on the things that we should say no to. Mm -hmm. right? Just something to think about. All right. Yeah. Who's gonna go cool. Yeah. Cool. Now that I'm plugged up, I'm happy to play. Yay! All right! Jamal, Meg, well, you Meg ready? is still on mute. Jamal, you up? You ready? <laughs> no, I'm not ready. I've, I've never done improv, improv ever before. Hey, I did it. But I love the fact that you said, I've never done improv, so you ready to improve your improv right now. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. We're whole, see, look at me. Yeah. What am I doing now right now? Fucking time. There's Jamal, no... I'm holding space for you. I'm holding space for you. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you do artistically, Jamal? I see all this. Is this podcast equipment? Is this radio? Um, so I'm a poet. So that's a bunch of recording equipment. Like I'm do in you, my studio. Do you I, do, do records for other people? Do you record other poets' CDs and stuff? Record whoever whoever wants to come through. Well, not now. Right. <laughs> Don't touch my shit now. Don't touch it. <laughs> Don't spit on it. Don't look at it. <laughs> so why don't we do this for Jamal? Why don't we, why don't we, I don't know. Let's see. I'm thinking, so how can we let Make you be comfortable with the let be? Oh. How can you surrender? What helps you surrender? I don't know. Because I'm starting to realize that I might be a little bit of a control freak. Mm. <laughs> I think that's in every human, the, yeah, the yeah. desire to control our circumstances, even though control is an illusion. Right. Just, it's illusory. But right. the desire to create it, look at Shane's face. <laughs> <laughs> but the desire to create it. Look at my phone froze on that facial expression. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> the desire to create it is, is, innate in all of us mm -hmm. thank um, you thank you that one gets that that one gets that <laughs> because <laughs> here's the thing jamal i'm a capricorn mm -hmm. and i know a lot about control 
Oof. And um, and and I'm I'm also a perfectionist, so I I really dislike having people see me in my process. I only like to deliver a final product. But here's the thing: what I realize is that that was all <laughs> ego. Mm. There's nothing real there. Right. And I'm looking straight at you. There's nothing real there. And the creativity, the space that you literally hold is all coming from your source, which is exactly what she just said. It's all innate. It's mm -hmm. all in you. So you can either choose right now mm -hmm. to pick something that is comfortable, which is completely okay, and we'll run with it, or mm -hmm. something that's completely left field, <laughs> and we'll still run with it. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a very agreeable person, so I don't... It's <laughs> I'll, I think I'm just not. I I've never done improv before, so. Yay. That's all I'm saying. Would you like to be so here? Why don't we give you the option of person A or person B first? Um, I think I want to be. Okay, wait. Person A. So I would start out whatever, whatever, and then give Lou their yes and like. To allow Lou to answer yes and, right? Yeah. Okay. That's what you're choosing? Huh? Yeah, I think so. I think so. All right. Person eight is. All right, people, let's give them their countdown. Get ready. One, two, two three. three. Go. Oh my God. 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 Oh, Lou, Lou. What, Lou. What, what? what happened? I finally, it came. I'm ready, I'm excited, and I don't know where to go from here, but here's my question for you. Do you think I sound like Little Wayne? Oh, well, yes. <laughs> and not necessarily a bad thing. You just, you just gotta like avoid direct plagiarism. <laughs> I mean, unless you wanna be one of those, you know, you could, you could hire, people could hire you out for like parties, and you could be an impersonator. You don't yeah. look anything like him. That'd be the hard part. <laughs> That'd be the hard part. You want to have to kind of get a, like a mask constructed or something. Well, I don't know how you. Would. I, I think people do that though. I'm I'm thinking about getting face tattoos. Um, I think that's the first step. <laughs> face tattoos, right? Yes. <laughs> and you would still want a, like a mask that went over the face tattoos and made you look more like. Lil Wayne, because you were right now. It's not. It's, this ain't it. Is it the beard? Is it the beard? I don't. I think it's a facial structure. Oh. <laughs> could could you do Face Off? Like, have you seen that movie Face Off? <laughs> With John Travolta and Nick Nick Cage. Yes, and uh, I think um, that comedian um, Margaret Cho is actually in it too. I don't know who that is. Oh, I did that ending. Uh, well, if you come over, I'll show you that movie, and maybe we can find some doctors. Okay. Can, yeah. Twenty minutes. Okay. See you later. And see. Oh my goodness! Isn't that exhilarating, Jamal? How did it feel? No, how did yeah. it feel? That was fun to find like that character that would be like working on his brand. <laughs> uh, it was, it was, it was fun. I mean, I was yeah. feel like, I'm, I'm shaking a little bit. Yeah. I think that's just, that's me. Like I, when, when I don't know what I'm doing, I get nervous that I'm going to uh, not present my best self. Yeah. Mm. I wonder how interesting. So two things I want to say. Um, <laughs> I wonder if that shaking and that nervousness is really just your vibration of your source. Mm. <laughs> like so excited that, oh my God, I'm about to come out. Woo I'm Michelle, yay! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I wonder, you know? <laughs> and Lou, you were lucky. 
he, I mean, I mean, he, he, she, your yes and, I haven't in a long time heard yes ands that go in so fluidly, you know? Oh, thank you. You had a support there. You had a forward movement that was there to back you, to catch you, to make you look good. It was effortless. <laughs> oh, man. It was really lovely to watch, even on screen. <laughs> yeah. Do we want to do one more? Meg, can you come on? Are you enjoying us? <laughs> I am. You guys are great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Can you do one, or is it too distracting? Well, so I'm kind of in the same boat with, uh, I think it's Jamal. Jamal. Uh, wow. Improv, I was 15, mm -hmm. and someone handed me a purple ball, and I looked at it and went, what is it? And they're like, I don't know, you tell us. And I was like, can I be a lighting designer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so I'm a DJ, yes, but I've always been a lighting designer. So I'll, I'll try it, but... I'm, I have no idea what's going to come out. <laughs> That's the one exactly. you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to. Who would like to be with our Meg? Who would like to be with our Meg? Anyone? Anyone? Any takers? I will volunteer to go again if, if, uh, if no one else is. Great. I want to take anybody's spot if they want it. So, Meg, why don't you be person A and now Nemo can be person B? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Here Hang we go. on, Meg. Just a second. I need to change my screen so that I can see you. Okay. There we go. I wonder what it's like out there. I, I think I think up is that way. Is anyone in here? Can you in hear me? Uh, yeah, I, I, I can hear you, but you, you're going to need to turn it down a little bit. My, the speaker in here is broken. So like when you say anything, it's really loud in here. Where did that come from? That was like really way too loud. I, yeah. Whoa. So you can like, there's a knob right in front of you. Look is in front of here? you. Look, look, look down. Yeah. Go, just please try not to say anything. If you could no, look I think down. I'm upside down. Someone's and, and me upside turn down. the knob ah. down a bit. Ah. Ah. I'm upside down. Is someone call a squirrel? Yes, I know you're upside down. Can you, if you press the red button, press the red button that's I right in front of you. I think my roots are pointed up. I can can't not, move. Can, can you not hear me? I think it's possible you can't hear me. Press, if you can hear me, press the red button. Press the, the, put the button in front of the, like the, God. If you can just look at, look at the screen. Hey, oh. The leaves look like underground. Would you mind Press looking ready. at the screen? Maybe I can become Would a lava tree. At... <laughs> Hi. Press the button. Press the red button. Press the red. Oh wait, 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 wait! I found it. I found a red yeah. button. Press the. Press it. Press it. That was the this blue game one. It's not working. The escape pod isn't working. Help! Help! I think and you press the blue one because this is filling up with water. This is water. Oh no! It was dark and now it's wet and it's upside down and the button doesn't uh, work. Okay, okay. Well, I, no, I, I, it, it, it's only getting wet slowly, so I think we've got at least like two minutes. So I, I just oh need you to know I've always loved you. And, and even though you have always been too loud, uh, it, it's all been worth it because this navigational trip has just been the greatest thing ever. So, you know, signing off. And seen beautiful, <laughs> and your face is priceless. <laughs> you know what that reminded me myself. of? It reminded me of like some really trippy acid movie where like flowers are like alive or something, and then but like the, but there's like a plot twist and like. <laughs> And the flower thinks it's in the ground, but it's really in a box of dirt. And then there's like buttons in there, and like some kind of sci-fi bullshit. I was with I it. Was, I was in a puzzle room a couple weeks ago, and and one of the one of the puzzles was that you had to get the person on the other side to push the button, but you couldn't hear them. Listen, oh, wow. I will never in my indigenous fucking life. <laughs> Go into one of those goddamn escape places. People in this country are still struggling to get free 
and people are going for fun to get trapped. <laughs> Fucking explain this shit to me. Yeah, no. let me pay you. Let me pay you to re-traumatize myself. Let me pay you nine dollars to do a, 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 a Sudoku <laughs> puzzle in a room with four other people in one one exo marker. I tell you, there are some people who need to know that experience so they can understand. <laughs> Maybe I see that point, Lynette, but I don't think that there's instruction. Like I don't think they're being provided pamphlets <laughs> or any shit with this. <laughs> so um there you go there's the yes and sorry, sorry. <laughs> I got uh, that on a little soapbox um what'd you see Lou? on my little soapbox no I love it no I love it that's what this woman is for right? <laughs> I mean, but that was um, hilarious though <laughs> It was wonderful. Each of them were so different and so amazing. Um, so this is what I'm going to, um, I'm going to ask of you, if you can, if it's available to you, I'd like for you to get some pen and some paper or pencil or papers, a gadget that you can uh, take some notes on. I, I hear my child screaming. Gonna, there are other parents here. I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> so, <clears throat> oh, it's okay. I have it here, babe. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, uh, I don't want for this to kind of like um, fall as soon as we disconnect virtually. So I'd like to give you um, some daily applications that you can use so that the improv can become more freeing and more kind of like making peanut butter and jelly or breathing. It's so automatic for you. So the daily application for improvisation. <clears throat> On the top of the paper, I'd love for you to write the yes and. And just remember that that's, I'm, you know, I was about to say that that's the way that we should show up, but I'm not here to dictate anything to you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say to you that when we show up with the yes and in life, right? Um, these are the ways that we can help uh, that process. So number one, reality versus duality check. Please write that. Uh, I'm sure that some of you um, are probably uh, familiar with the book, uh, um, The Artist Way by Julian Cameron. And one of the things that uh, that she offers are the morning pages. And I am a firm believer of these morning pages. It's three pages that you write as soon as you get up, before you take your piss, before you, you know, wash your face, brush your teeth, before you get out of your bed, you write these morning pages. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to be in your reality, in your source, in what your truth is, as opposed to the ego, because the ego, you wake up, your source wakes up before your ego does. And so if you can write down your truth, how, whatever it may be, whatever concerns, whatever agenda you may, you may have, you get to write it down and filter it. And, and, and pen does not leave paper, though. And write it before the ego gets to interrupt it. And that, subconsciously, will then start to form, guide the rest of your day. So reality versus duality check is your morning pages, three pages, pen does not leave paper for three pages. <clears throat> Number two, be aware of the block. So, Lujan, what's the block in improv? Did she put me on mute? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Jamal, what's the block in improv? Do you remember Sorry, what I said? Off mute. For me, the block is when people say no or like reject something that I've offered. Thank hey, you. Jamal, what do you think about like what blocks you, even when like you're writing? So be aware. Go ahead, Jamal. What are you going to say? No, nope, I was I, I I thought Lou was asking me a question, and I was gonna say that's 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 a question that I ask myself often. Like for me, even when I'm writing, even as a poet, it's when I tell myself no. I tell myself like, no, this isn't good. This isn't right. Like, uh, if I get caught up in that thought process, it's just like improv. It's like it's just like another person telling me no. Uh, then I'll start. If I start editing, essentially, uh, while I'm writing. So I tried not to edit until all the thoughts are out. But if I get too caught up editing, then it just, it shuts everything so, down. Um, I'm sorry, guys, but uh, my people, I, uh, let me see. I'm trying to reconnect with the audio that I have because I got a call. We can hear can you. you. Hear You're struggling to hear me, yeah, too? we can hear you. No, we yep. can hear you. Can you hear us? Yeah. I can hear you like whispering. Huh. Mm. And it's okay. 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 Speak again. Can you hear us? Hello. Oh, Ruby, you're the bomb. Thank you, honey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ruby. <Rumi. laughs> Welcome. Lou, you're, you, you, you hit exactly on what, what this number two is because a lot of times it's so interesting because you started with the external, right? But before the external can block us, there's so much blockage that we do <laughs> as musicians, as poets, as, as, as I mean, a, a, any, even if you haven't tapped into what your creative source is, we are constantly self-editing, right? And so it's like, beware of the block. There is a reason why that message is coming to you whether it's because it's something that you're supposed to perfect or something that you're supposed to be aware of so that you can see, oh no, that's not it. And now I have to go back to my goals and, re and figure it out. But don't block the message from source. Mm -hmm. Aware of your block because it will stop your forward movement. And remembering that even when we make a fucking mistake, the shit is still forward movement, right? But we gotta be true to the block. Um, I really like that because I think I've always rejected those messages of like editing and of like uh, those messages of negativity that come from within. And I like that you're saying like, be aware of those messages, save them, be aware, like be true to them still because they're also part of your process that feels more real to me than what you get the advice you get a lot which is just just ignore all that um because there's no way to really be yourself and ignore all those because the ego is part of the self right so because all that is really coming from the ego i feel like and the ego is part of the self you can't just pull it off of you and just oh i'm just gonna sit this in the corner for the day and like be walk about my day without having the ego. Um, so it's really, I really appreciate that advice, Lynette. Thank you so much. Of course, love. And here's the interesting thing too, whether it's ego, whether it's fear, as long as we can make it a separate entity and engage with it, because it has a right, it has a purpose. Yeah. This as long as we don't allow it to become us because it's not that would right. be unreal. You know, that would be the duality. Right. And remind me of what you just said when I hit to number four. Okay. Because even those things that we that we try to censor, <laughs> they serve a purpose. And I'll get to that on four. Okay. <laughs> number three, extending the yes to self. Mm. So yeah, we can, you know, beware of the block, but also extending the yes and to really allow that inner child will always come. And we do such a disservice to our source when we decide what parts of it can be vocal and which parts of it can be silenced. 
it's like when you're when you're when you're when you're planning a party and you know we're kind of eclectic people and so we have various you know different kinds of people in our lives right and a lot of times <laughs> i'm like damn who do i invite to this party because that's just a crazy mix i can't have everyone there should i have two different winter solstice no i can't do that right <laughs> so it's like how do we just say yes in honor that there is something outside of us that's supposed to happen because of our because of because of our, our invitation knowing that the universe is using us as a vehicle for something that might not be for us but for someone else mm -hmm. extending the yes to self mm. allows for number four extending and expanding with others mm. sometimes what we try to censor or what the yes is, isn't even for us. It's for someone else. And when we don't surrender, when we don't seek freedom in the delivery and embrace and accept it and forward move and offer it to someone else, then we also stop ourselves from our universal responsibility. Mm. There are moments when the universe uses us as the vehicle and the moment that we decide to silence a thought, an idea, even if it's something that we don't see fitting in our, in our current reality, we block the purpose. Because we're all connected, right? What doesn't serve us serves someone else. And so we, I'm a part of you, Mima. I'm a part of you, Mike. Keeping in mind of that, expanding with others, and allowing people in your process. Yo, seriously, I just said that shit to Jamal. Like, I used to be like, you know, you're only going to be a part of the final product. And I was like, that's fucked up. That's really fucked up that you're not allowing people to see what you're going through what your struggles are, what your process is, because there's learning in that, there's growth in that, not just for us, but for the collective. And here's number five, my people. And this is the last one. Y preparate. Prepare yourself. <laughs> oh, before I say this one, I just have to say you are all so beautiful. And I'm so grateful to have this moment right now with all of you to share this time with you. Just to you know. <laughs> Attunement. Thank you. Uh, there you go. It's attunement. Number five is attunement. Tuning in. Tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this goes back to the things that we were talking about with the yes and the and. So, number one in five. So, A or B, however you want to, you know, mm -hmm. delegate. Notice your surrenders. Notice your blocks. Notice your shifts. And notice what creates those shifts. Is it a day? Is it an item? Is it a scent? Is it a person? Is it a memory? Is it a picture? Is it a work of art? that you've created? Is it a space? Think about it. Because that's, that's where the healing happens, right? That's how we can have forward movement when we can recognize, oh, my trauma is there. And this is what brings it, right? So if I connect with what brings it, then I can heal with what brings it because I've embraced it, I've accepted, I've acknowledged it, and now I can have forward movement. Mm -hmm. Find ways to come back to source. Is that B? That's yes. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> you know, um, I'm going to share something pretty intimate with you to explain this one. So I've been doing this 21-day uh, meditation with, with Deepak and Oprah. Mm -hmm. And um, in my meditation, something that's been coming up a lot is this image of a very simple wooden house structure with a girl. Sometimes she looks like a teenager. Sometimes she looks like a seven-year-old. Sometimes she looks like a full-fledged woman. Sometimes she's crisscross applesauce. Sometimes she's standing, leaning on the door. Sometimes she's inside of the home, inviting me in, <laughs> confidently sitting on her throne. And all of those versions are my inner self. Mm -hmm. Inviting me in to connect and to find and to, con and to connect and to find and to allow for her to surface in a way that she hasn't yet, that it hasn't yet. When we are creatives, when we find connection to something bigger than what's one dimensional, than what's safe for most people, oftentimes we get the resistance. And the resistance starts with self. And then even when we start to try to let go of that resistance, then the resistance comes with the people around us sometimes. But if we always connect with that source, and connect with the yes of that source, then there's nothing there's nothing that we would want to deny. Except what we're not supposed to, because in that place, we are completely knowing what is for us and what is not. I don't know if this is what you expected for an improv class to be like, but <laughs> um, Lynn, that is that is so beautiful. I um yeah. I really I needed to to hear that too, because like as someone who my trauma well some of my trauma comes from not feeling safe inside of a house and not wanting a home, right? Mm. Like. That has been a huge challenge for me during this like quarantine. And I discovered through meditation that I can find freedom and I can be outside within myself. Yeah. So that has been something that I have the great opportunity to work on right now because I have no choice. Like, so that's been difficult, but like it is coming back to, like, cause when I go there, when I go in that, when I go to that place, right. And I, and it's usually like me in a wide expansion. There's always like a landscape that's very vast because it's open. I'm outdoors. I'm safe now. I'm, you know, and it's like been a really beautiful journey to def to remember because it really is like when I was a kid, it, I felt the expansion inside myself it wasn't external when i opened my arms up on route 66 and was like whoa i feel like i'm like my spirit is going in like miles in each direction that came from inside of me you know what i mean so like and four walls can't stop that like you know what i'm you know what i'm saying so like that has been a really beautiful journey to come back to that because it's not so much a discovery as it is a like remembering reconnecting to that source go back thank you that's beautiful anything nemo you'd like to say something no nope. no nope. okay sorry. i was making the ambient noise no it's okay. i had almost an opposite experience where i needed to not feel what I had felt as a child, because what I felt as a child was never that. I never felt that expanse and that freedom. What I felt as a child <clears throat> was always, uh, I was the oldest of three children in a very dysfunctional household uh, with an alcoholic abusive father. And uh, my mother had, had and has untreated um, mental illness. Um, 
and <clears throat> um, I was the parent uh, to my younger siblings and, and to my parents for that matter. Um, and <clears throat> I needed to not feel any of that shit when I got stuck, got stuck from all this. Um, and I, of course, did immediately. Um, and so I was just like, I freaked the fuck out, <laughs> basically. Um, and so I went to my psychiatrist and I asked her to up my Prozac initially because initially what I had just done was just like, I'm just going to lay down and just not feel anything for, you know, until the world just collapses in on itself. And um, so once my meds started to take effect, um, I'm obviously seeing my therapist still, but what I really needed to know beyond all those, <clears throat> you know, adjustments or whatever was that I'm an adult now and I have a car and I have also a lot of tools that I've picked up along the growing up that um, allow me to leave my house um, safely. And um, I'm also not in that kind of uh, terror type um, environment. So I have to like keep telling myself, you know, sometimes multiple times a day that I'm not trapped. Um, I am claustrophobic because of all that too. So it's just, I have to just tell myself, I'm not trapped. I'm not trapped. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. So um, instead of connecting with like a feeling that I has a, had as a child to get over it, I've had to connect with these feelings I've had as an adult that, you know, solid. I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a good house. Like I'm not, I'm not about to be feeling those feelings of terror. Um, so it's interesting that we have these similar, like, we don't want to be trapped in the house. That's the same feeling. Right. But we, hit, right. we, we have these opposite coping mechanisms that came out of it. it I mean, sorry to talk so long about it, but it's... It, no, it's no, please. Yeah, and I, I, I totally see that because, I mean, my family is very alcoholic too, very violent, very, you know, um, and mine stems from, because I'm an open book and I, you know, I tell everybody everything, um, my, uh, my father had pulled a gun on me while he was blackout drunk in the house, and that's why, one of the reasons why I don't feel safe, I don't feel like, and I ran into the woods when it happened because he had pointed it at my head because he didn't even know I was his daughter. He was just, and I love my, I love my family. Don't get me wrong, but we all got demons. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was very loved. Just, there was some trauma. There was some traumatic events that happened, um, because of the alcoholism. And I ran into the, into the woods in the mountain and hid in the woods for hours. So even to this day, like I will, it'll take me like two to three hours to, to try to sleep, to get calm enough to sleep in a bed. But if I'm out camping and I'm like laying down on the ground in the woods, like I'm out because I feel safe, you know? Um, so this has been a way for me to heal from that. But I'm, I still got challenges too. Like my OCD intrusive thought has been through the fucking roof mm -hmm. to the point where like last night I, I finally found like some, like some really cool self-help sites. And the reason why I say all that is to say that a lot of it's improv, mm -hmm. like the things like the, the behavioral therapy and like the exercises that they offer. It's a lot of improv. Like there's one game that you can play that's like literally you take the intrusive thought to court and you are judge, jury, and, and mm -hmm. executioner and all of that, you know? And like I like that. Yeah, and it's it's actually really been helping. I mean, it's still there and it's still like I still have like, you know, I might take a sip of this coffee and have an intrusive thought and then I have to keep sipping and keep sipping until so like the thought corrects itself. But these exercises that that site I've found that is all like basically improv allow me to like do something different with the cup or like, you know, and like switch up the language and switch up like the argument that's happening in my head, which has been so helpful, but it's still like a struggle. And I just think it's crazy. Like all of 
this quarantine has brought out so much shit that we have spent time avoiding and running from and there trying not to fix, you know? Me, and like, at least and me now, yep. um, now we get to play with it. You know, we get to, we get to try to figure out what our healing looks like and what that, what works and what to let, to let go of the yes. And right. Yeah, I definitely realized that there have been some, like, direct messages sent to me that I was just like, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. that's not, this is not, we're not. Um, and I have four years uh, spent a lot of time obfuscating my own healing by helping others. It's good to be a healer. That's fine. It's good to help others. It's good to go. Yeah. You know, somebody needs groceries. You just go. I got it. <laughs> At what point do I heal the healer? Right. Oh yeah. yeah, you're speaking. You're speaking straight up truth right now because I'm like, talking to you, Shane. I know that. Oh, of course, of course. Like, and 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 I've I went through a like a t- a point in my life. I think it was like a few years ago. Um, Jamal will probably remember this when I was like really visceral with guerrilla poets i was just like all you other poets in charlotte we doing shit so i mean it was just anger and anger and anger right i went through that a few years ago probably 15 years ago like nobody's doing anything activism right. wise, but you- and so I, I fell heavy into activism and and then it also got to a point where the activism the act of helping others became a way for me not to be alone by myself boom and you know how, like, and people would tell me, like, be careful of martyr syndrome. Be careful <laughs> of martyr syndrome. And I'm like, I don't have fucking martyr syndrome. I just really care about this world, don't you? And then, like, it took me pushing myself and running so hard to the point where I ended up in the hospital before I went, you know, maybe I'm slowly trying to kill myself. Maybe, maybe I need to stop and look. Yeah. yeah. I call it the JC complex. Um, thinking that we're Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm just saying, that I, I was raised Catholic, but I'm not that at all. But, you know, um, it's something that, that, that stays with me. The fact that I'm, I feel, you know, um, my background comes in theater education, um, and it always served, um, a, it, it was always a vehicle to, um, to inform and to create awareness. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, you know, sometimes there's a, the same thing that Jamal was talking about, like that, that, that nervousness, that energy that you have when you go on, on the stage, you know, it's like the idea that you have information to help and inform and enlighten. Um, Sometimes, you know, you can step into that that place of you know wanting to save the world and here's the thing and it goes back to what i was saying about reality versus duality it's not about saving the world it's about saving self because when you save self then you are saving the world because right. we're all connected yeah. mm-hmm. right you know yeah. so like it so long. i've, I've that, had a chance to reflect and i wondered if i might be able to share something with you guys for a minute yes please me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so I did acting in high school, so this is not the first time I've done improv, like, between people, yeah. by any means. Um, and I've done other things throughout my, throughout my time. And I, and I mentioned that I'm a musician, so uh, I improvise there, too. Um, but in that, almost all the improv that I've been doing has been alone, right? It's always me performing alone. And so it, it was very interesting for me. I came into this workshop with no concerns whatsoever. I was going to have a good time. And then all of a sudden, I realized we were going to be doing it in pairs. <laughs> and the fear came back. Okay? It came back. And, and I, oh, no. Because all of a sudden... It, I, I, there's the possible, when I block, it's because I'm trying to do it right. 
because I think I'm doing it wrong. And, I, and I'm like, no, that's not the right way. But I can't explain what the right way is. I just know it's not the way I'm doing it. Right? Oh. Um, so all of a sudden, here's this opportunity for me to mess it up with the other person. What if the other person doesn't understand what I'm talking about? What if the other person isn't with my flow? What if the other person gives me something I can't handle, mm -hmm. right? And all of a sudden, the fear is right back there. But I think what's interesting is that I really haven't, I haven't been having a lot of trouble like performing with other people. But this yes and is something that I need to learn to use with myself, just between my own thoughts, just the grace of that between the thoughts that happen in sequence in my head, I can use that. So I think that this has been very eye opening for me. And I think the very best workshops are the ones where I walk in and I think this is going to be fun. And I walk out and I think that changed everything. So thank you very much. This has really been fun and special for me. Thank we, thank we. <laughs> thank thank we. I mean, thank everyone. Yeah. For coming. Like this has really been amazing to talk with you all and to play with you all. And mm. yeah, I'm very, very grateful for this. Me too. Where, um, where are you based, I, Lynette? Yes. I, I'm so grateful. And I want y'all to know, I don't know if you can see the light, but um, I am recording this, but I'm not going to post it. So oh. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to post it. <laughs> That's why I was, I thought because you were recording, I was sharing all these thoughts that came out of it. Yeah. Um, like don't, don't worry about me posting it. What I'm probably well, going to do. How many people are worried about posting it? How many people would like it to post? I mean, if you posted it, I would be fine. I would be fine with that. That's why I was putting all the, pulling all the like things out of it here that Lynette was saying and stuff, because um, I thought it would be useful. I feel like Lynette is an amazing facilitator mm -hmm. of this. Uh, you just had a life. We just had a light, I just had a life shaking experience. I'd really love it if I knew that somebody watching what, what just happened to me would have a similar experience. So I, I agree. part I'll of probably... what I love so much about improv is that when you're willing to, to, to jump over that fear and take those extra risks, that's when you get that really genuine voice. I think that Lou's talking about that she was using a really genuine and I was really impressed by it. Um, so if, if anybody is really going to be like, oh my God, no, don't put that out there, then let's talk about it. But otherwise I'm all for putting it One up. way to do that, that would just be based in like consent theater practices would mm -hmm. be if we each contact Shane after this yes. and let Shane know Good whether idea. we would like it shared or not. Cause yeah, like and I'll I'll probably clip it too. Like I'm not going to have me smoking a cigarette in case my students are watching, you know, but, um, <laughs> yeah, no, <we're> <laughs> but even though they're probably at home smoking too, at least they're not arrested. Damn it. Oh my God. This is my, my, my fiance um, teaches, um, students at a, uh, I don't know if you guys have, do you have KIPP where you are Shane? I don't think so. Um, so it's called knowledge is power Academy and it's actually like a nationwide, um, program, um, no knowledge is power project is what it's called. And, um, and we have one here in, um, East Durham and, um, it's really big in the state. Um, and he teaches eighth grade English. Um, and it's been a struggle. Like actually he's, he started in January cause their other teacher left because of their behavior issues. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, you know, it's been a lot of like struggle, but it's actually been better since he's been teaching online because it's no classroom management. And he was like a first time teacher thrown to these, he threw to the wolves, you know, but now it's just like content and he's so good at what he does. You know, he's a spoken word poet and like he can, he can like facilitate all this content that he has so much knowledge of. It's so much better. Yeah, I actually, I've been noticing that too, like, um, a lot of my students, I've been doing the Shane Spooky Storytime Hour, and like, my students are actually on there watching it, like, they're actually, like, they, they're, they're actually being more engaged than, <laughs> than they 
were before. But um, a lot of them are also in group homes. So like they literally, like they're not even allowed to go out, out unless they're with people, you know, and a lot of them have like therapists that have to be with them or they're, they're already on ankle bracelets anyway, some of them. And, you know, like, so it's, they've been benefiting from it. So yeah, I'll totally, I'll do, I'll clip it. And um, if y'all are down, I can send you the video so y'all can approve it before I post it. Um, Lynette, where are you based? Um, so I'm in South Charlotte. Okay. Um, and um, so this is what I, I wanted to uh, say. Um, just to kind of just to kind of manifest the things that we've been discussing and the things that have touched us. Um, when you do reach out to Shane to decide what you might like to edit from this, uh, I, I want to remind you that there has been an amazing release that has happened here. Yeah. And again, that there is a collective beyond us. And especially during these times, um, there are certain messages um, that if awarded to people kind of serendipitously, it's a, mm. it's a, it's a gift. Mm. And that through our um, It's okay to have secrets, right? Mm. But once the secret becomes something that's too big, too unbearable to hold, we release it. And I feel like some of that happened today. Granted, it happened because it was created in a very um, um, kind of sanctum space. Um, I would just challenge uh, challenge that whatever you choose to edit is coming from source and not from ego that you allow for whatever healing needs to happen from other people through your experiences and your voice today that you allow that to you allow that gift to the universe and not just have it limited to the people that were in this group mm -hmm. yeah and i i will also say to you like we have the ability through our vulnerability to be the gatekeepers for healing yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. And that's, that's another reason why I, I post so much that I post and I show the work and I show the struggle and I show the dark nitty gritty shit because especially socially online, people usually don't want to showcase that. Right. But I, I, I've always believed that like, if we're truly going to make a difference, then we have, we have to show how we got there. We don't just magically, we don't just magically, you know, make it and then have other people think of us as some superhuman because that used to happen to me too. And they'd be like, oh, I don't see how you get as much that you get done. And I started posting like, hey, guess what? The only thing I ate today was a gas station dinner because I'm pushing myself too hard. You see the success, you don't see what I'm doing to my body, right? So like us showing like this is our process and this is what happens and this is how you make self-discoveries that shows people like there's nothing wrong with you if you're not there yet you just don't know if you're how to get there and then they think they're doing it the wrong way and then they just stop all together they block themselves right but like when we show like look everybody struggles everybody goes through this like whenever i tell someone that that just is introduced to me that has been like maybe know me for a week that like I have mental like struggles and things like that too. They're like blown away. And I'm like, I'm human. <laughs> like, do you, do you think you're the only one that breaks down on a daily basis? Like I went before I walked into this gallery, I was crying in my car, sweetheart. Like we, <laughs> like, come on now. So true. <laughs> it's like, so yeah. not only not only is it helping others, but it's also helping ourselves because we are now humanizing ourselves. Yes. We're not seen as like some magical mythical being, especially spoken word artists, especially anybody that's in performance. Like they they see you on stage and they think like you must not be scared of anything. Mm. Well, I can I can talk about like my past trauma on stage 
in front of 500 people, a thousand people, how many ever, but I can't walk into the YMCA and ask the person at the counter how to use the fucking equipment. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because here's the thing, like we, <laughs> we post on Insta, we post on Facebook and we have the judgments of that. We know the judgments that are out there about those portals and like what they mm-hmm what they do, what they signify. Mm -hmm. And this is the, this is the meat of it. Mm -hmm. This is the part that people really need to know that it's out there and that, and that it's okay to show this, this it's okay to show this because then it becomes more, this becomes the norm and people Mm -hmm. understand that this is okay to discuss. This is okay to heal from you are not alone. And then we can move forward. Yeah, and another thing I just want to say real quick, like I've been blown away with the empathy, the level of empathy that is on social media right now. Like if you think about it, before this happened, everybody thought of Facebook as like argument war zone, right? Like you post something, you're going to get attacked or blah, blah. And now like I'm seeing people support each other in ways that they were not doing so before. And if whatever community that we build now in this space and the way we build it has got to carry on into the future so that that mental shift, that paradigm shift that's happening all across the world right now can continue that momentum because that community that, that offering each other grace, getting rid of expectations, you know, um, appreciation for human touch, appreciation for for uh, even something so simple as hugging someone or being in the same room with someone like that shit has got to continue i don't want to see our society or our community backslide back to where we were instead of like the growth that can happen from this because it's it's forcing us to be face to face in such a way to, and consider that we're all going through the same shit. It's the same thing I do with my students. Whenever a student is bullying someone else, the first thing I try to do is figure out what story isn't being told. So like <laughs> through art, if they can admit to the class, yeah, my dad called last night and I, I hadn't talked to him in like three months and he was drunk on the phone and he cussed me out. As soon as he says that out loud, the student next to him then has the ability to go, damn, my dad did too. I didn't know that you were, I didn't know that your dad was also an alcoholic. I didn't know you were, and now there's no bullying. There's no bullying because we've realized we're all struggling with the same shit. You know? You know what's, that really, sense? what's really interesting too is that right now, like when you talk about stories, like the stories untold, like the, 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 um, the story that we are all so familiar with, <laughs> whether whether it's mythical for us or something that we follow, um, I think it's really interesting that um, that that this is Holy Week, <laughs> and and you know um, I woke I'm up correct. in the morning and I was sharing this with Shane the, um, yesterday. I woke up on Sunday morning and realized, oh shit. <laughs> It's fucking Palm Sunday. <laughs> and, you know, the, you know, the, the, the nine-year-old in me would be in church, you know, in the choir. <laughs> and, and I'm realizing the walk, you know, the beginning of the walk that's in this story of this man and the walk that I'm in right now. And the walk that we're in, in this plague, in this time of simplicity, of isolation, of opportunity to really release what no longer serves us and step into the unknown fearlessly, step into our full purpose and knowing that in that place, it doesn't make a difference who judges what, because we know what our source is. And you know, I, I, um, if anybody else has anything else to say, um, um, that's 
I'm, I'm more than happy to be here for it. Um, but if not, we can close on this. Like I, I am just, um, just all of you. Um, and I'm sorry that I can't. It's okay. Thank you very bit. much for this. This is an incredible <laughs> class. I've got, um, I've got another show in 30 minutes and I'm exhausted, but this <laughs> is so worth it. I, I, I've been looking forward to that other show and then you get to the, have this show and it, thank you so much. So thank you, Nemo, for playing with us today and for being here. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, Nemo. Yes, it was so nice to finally meet you. I, yeah. can't wait to well, I hope it was worth it. <laughs> oh, there's my virtual hug. Did you feel it? <laughs> yes, I could. I've been feeling it for the last hour and a half. Oh, look. Oh, my God. Are you serious? That's how long we've been? Oh, yes, ma'am. Wow. There's no time in quarantine. There's no time. <laughs> I didn't have it before. And There's I'm nowhere to hide clear. from the exhaustion in quarantine. Yeah. Amor y cariño y salud. <laughs> and affection and health. Adios, Nemo. Thank you. All right, y'all. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, Thank you, Shane. We'll do more workshops. If you want to do a workshop, Jamal, you want to talk about like production or what it's like to run a podcast? Hit me up. Let's do some stuff. Um, yeah, I really, I really have been wanting to do a podcast for a good long time now. So. See, there you go. You got your first. You got your first client right uh, there. I would like to be a guest on a podcast. Me yeah. too, Jamal. <laughs> And Lynette, um, I'm working with the Women's Theater of Raleigh, and I would love to connect with you. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Daniel, would you like to be so excited, excited if you didn't notice? <laughs> <laughs> I would really love to like uh, connect and, uh, uh, you know, uh, yes. I don't know the Absolutely. word. But let's get whatever it. it needs to be. It will yeah. be. <laughs> thank all right my people stay well stay blessed Bye. and thank you for yes and <laughs> so nice meeting you, well, nice to meet you. Igualmente, same here bye-bye <laughs> bye-bye